Hi everyone, welcome to the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync for Monday the 14th of December. I am Aching Brain, I will be your host. We're going to go through all the usual good things, the high priority initiatives, the upcoming ship releases, pinning services, low priority initiatives, no other initiatives, nothing's low priority. We're all friends here. Um, uh, Q&A parking lot, fun, 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 fun. All right, let's go. Uh, first up on our high priority initiatives, our upcoming ship releases. Who can, who can talk about this? No, there's some good stuff coming. Well, I guess uh, we're working on getting out um, GoIPFS 0.8 RC2 um, to be equipped with some bug fixes and support for MFS policies, um, where you just say, hey, Anytime MFS updates, please tell this pitting service to store that for me, which should be pretty nifty. Um, so keep keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, and in the LIP2P front, just a bit of the 30 last week we shipped the RC0 and then RC1 with some fixes that we got while trying to integrate with IPFS. So we are basically now finishing this integration with IPFS before shipping the final release. Uh, it's basically almost, almost done. The type check CI jobs are finally green, uh, and I'm just missing a, a test in the HTTP client, which is currently failing. And there is also a, an issue with the bundle size that somehow uh, it is way bigger than it should be. I, I was looking into it with Hugo uh, just some minutes ago, and I think we found the solution, but I will check after the, the meeting. Just for the record, uh, libp2po.30 will ship with uh, auto relay support, type devs in uh, libp2p core, custom announce filter in the custom uh, dialer address sorter, and also discover and connect to closest peers. And yeah, hopefully this week it will ship. Super good. Um, there may be a JS IPFS release. Maybe. More news on that when it happens. Um, moving on, uh, pinning services. What's going on there? Uh, yep. Things are, you know, uh, go up to 0 0.8 RC1 went out with, with basic support for pinning services. Um, and uh, MFS support coming soon. And uh, Iraqli can talk a bit about the state of the JS client for that. Yeah, so I updated the JS HTTP client uh, to reflect the changes that we ended up doing to the API last week, I think. Um, uh, some tests are in place. As I was using, writing more tests, I discovered some edge cases that are not working in our C1. I report the bugs. I'll be adding more tests this week. That's it. Yeah, uh, just like uh, to finish this up on the IPFS web UI front, uh, uh, Rafael is back and will be switching to the uh, HTTP client uh, uh, with uh, those new commands added by Rackley. We will uh, probably tag a new web UI release where uh, support for remote pinning is not enabled yet, but all the unrelated improvements are present and uh, include that in 0.8. Um, and if we are lucky, we may switch uh, uh, that uh, pull request uh, to the version with pinning services. If not, we will uh, probably not include it uh, in a version uh, of web UI that's like hard coded with uh, Go IPFS and include it in the next version, or maybe we'll do a patch version. Uh, depending how long uh, it takes for uh, us to fix all the bugs. Uh, if there will be more release candidates than two, uh, we'll see. Yeah, I suspect whether, you know, we may end up with more RCs just if we're, if we end up finishing certain, you know, certain things ahead of other ones, like we finish MFS stuff before web UI is ready and, and things like that. Um, Yes, next up is local pinning, which is 
uh, which is is done, is in, or at least storing pins in the data store in GoIPFS is done. Uh, it is in 0.8 RC1. It seems to be working fine. Download, try it out, see if it does anything weird for you. Um, you feedback from any anyone who was having problems previously. Yeah, yeah. So we're, yeah, I, some folks that, um, at Pinata, who have like a bajillion pins, are gonna try updating this week, I think, and and let us know how it goes. Uh, should be like a humongous impact for them because the number of pins they have is like insane. Um, uh, yeah, there. We may come back to so this this issue may be you know maybe closed for now, or we may reopen it when we are ready to implement the a local pinning equivalent to the remote pinning commands in Go IPFS with things like named pins and stuff like that that people have been looking for. Um, still figuring out where on the priority list that's gonna come for uh, you know, the next quarter. Cool, name pinning will be pretty useful, I think for everyone. Uh, next up is and duplicate transfer. pins and duplicate mm -hmm. pins also extremely useful. Cool. Um, yeah, next up is data transfer speed improvements. Yes, um, I actually added this. I don't know if it qual qual qualifies as a high priority initiative, but there are two people who are working on it dedicated, so I'm assuming it's relatively high priority. Um, uh, so uh, just the quick highlights, we shipped a plan for uh, uh, what the work we're doing. Um, and uh, we also shipped a new version of Go Graph Sync, which included a couple little fixes, mostly for Filecoin. Um, this week, we are going to be focusing on some Graph Sync internal best benchmarking. And then um, uh, we're going to be starting to fill out this like test suite uh, that we're going to be using to measure our improvements that we can deliver uh, around um, bit swap and graph sync mixing as we move towards hopefully much better data transfer speeds. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a more detailed version of this update that goes out by email to some people. If you are not on that list and want to be on that list, you can uh, message me and Slack and I will add you. So cool. That's all I got. Radical. Uh, next is JS improves discoverability and connectivity. Yeah, so I started a new iteration last week on the rendezvous. Basically, I started refactoring the client API. Uh, now we are, uh, we basically, the client will receive uh, the rendezvous server multi adders from libp2p config instead of what I was doing before, which basically was trying the rendezvous protocol in each node that would connect to us and it would be a more in a way of each node could be a rendezvous server, but we don't go, want to go in that way. So I simplified a lot the client with this. And I also added types to, to the rendezvous uh, open PR. And uh, up next, I intend to uh, get a garbage collector in the data store and uh, get a follow up on the rendezvous message signing. So that for the start of January, I hope to get this new iteration ready for review. That's it. Awesome. Um, I'm up next, bidirectional streaming and streaming errors in the browser. Um, so uh, if there are no more uh, objections, I think I'm gonna ship this uh, kind of experimental, but it's gonna be really good. Uh, it's been on the cards for a long time, been talking about it for ages, and uh, so I'm just going to ship it. Um, that's that. I mean, ship it, see what happens. Um, it's going to hopefully unlock a bit of the DHT stuff as well, because a lot of that is streaming. And the thing that like first actually put me onto these errors not working was trying to make a DHT query with a timeout and just being like, oh, cool. It just returns the number of like results it got in that time period. And I did it on the command line. I was like, oh, why did that exit with a non-zero error code? Um, so, you know, that's going to be interesting. Uh, no actual update on the DHC stuff. The uh, NAT manager made all the changes that have been required. Um, I guess it's punted to 31, which seems fair enough. Um, um, Alex, uh, I, I, I do have a review draft or whatever the GitHub calls it. 
uh, for that PR if you want to wait for a little longer. Yeah. I, I promise I'll finish it. Yeah, if you can finish it soon, because it's now been open for a month. Yeah, I know. Um, and it would be good to have it not open anymore. And it is experimental, so we can make changes. Um, that is the end of the high priority initiatives. Uh, moving on to the other initiatives, uh, file ad progress and web UI, uh, no update by the looks of things, uh, TypeScript integration. Yeah, so in the loop it beside, uh, the first iteration uh, with TypeDefs is now completed. It's, it will go in 0.30. Basically, as uh, the LibP2P core uh, with type devs, and we will uh, go in the add more in the other modules, like with no priority because it's not uh, the user API, so we'll not have a, long, a big priority on that. Right. So there's a couple more um, PRs on the data stores for data store FS, data store level. The test ground SDK JS is also um, adding types, and I'm currently working on the on the IPFS repo since I already did the, all the data stores um, that the repo depends on. Um, so yeah, check the the issue uh, where everything is tracked. If you do a PR, please um, add that to to this issue so we can keep, uh, um, track everything. And we also have a, a markdown document with some um, suggestion rules um, and overall documentation on how to do the types. And yeah, that's it. Cool. Next up, Berger 2 support, no update. Not traversal, no update. Unix FSV 1.5 and GuyPFS. No update. GuyPFS GC improvements. Uh, waiting for some uh, feedback on the design and ready to move forward with that uh, as soon as we I get, I get some uh, feedback from people who it's been submitted to. Uh, but other than that, no updates. Great. Um, that's it for the other initiatives. Uh, so moving on to the other items. So design review proposals. If you've got something to propose uh, a design review for, if you'd like to propose something that needs a review of the designer, uh, stick it on the list. Ah, just tying myself in knots. Anyway, uh, yes, stick a thing in that section of the uh, notes. Box and ask lots of PRs. Yes, I will do those while I'm waiting for Iraqli to finish his review of my PR. How about that? Quid, quid pro quo. Uh, questions. Do we need a new CID stuff given we'll be migrating to multi-format CID sometime soon? Uh, yeah, so am I unmuted? Yeah, so last Friday, I think we had, I don't know, a little bit of dumpster fire with something changing and then breaking other things. And I'm not sure it is worth doing those kind of updates to CIDs that don't really change anything, but like implementation wise, but then can cause issues given that I think we'll migrate to multi-format CID. Um, and I think it's not just CIDs, like generally the things that are will be replaced by multi-formats, maybe we should try not to change those as much given that we'll have to change them again soon. I think another one was multi-codex that is being discussed to over the weekend or so. So in the parking lot, there's that issue that you opened on JSIPFS. So I did reply to that issue this afternoon, uh, basically saying like breakages are going to happen when we change things without releasing them as, with the right version numbers, right? That's just, it's going to happen. Um, we should move to the new multi-formats. Now that we're kind of doing our Q1 planning for next year, it's a good opportunity to block off some time to actually do that work. Um, you know, if we get, if the nod comes from the IPLD team that these things are now ready for use, because previously they've, they've said, whoa, IPFS, you're like the biggest consumer of this thing. We're not, we're not ready yet. 
um, if the IPLD team are ready and can give us some support in integrating it, then we should look at blocking some time as part of our OKRs for Q1 next year to actually do this migration. Because it's going to be big. Like I don't think it's going to be as simple as just swapping out the CID module because it touches everything. Yep. And doing that is going to take coordination across lots of teams with lots of people. Um, you know, it's going to be similar. It's like it's going to be similar, but not as bad as I think it will be. But now we should block some time off and do that. What do you think? Okay. Uh, um, I'm yeah, just a little bit concerned with the with the usage of uh, ES modules and export maps because that could start be breaking changes and issues and bugs with bundlers and weird stuff. So yeah, we need to be careful because we didn't uh, move to Webpack 5 yet. When we do that, we plus export maps from multi-formats uh, that will start to break. I think just multi-formats actually does, you, does work with the older stuff too. As a, Stuff that they publish on NPM does go through the older passes too. Maybe these, are the, I don't know. these are the things that we need to bottom out, right? Sure. Um, maybe I can talk a little bit about the next item, which is you kind of mentioned already, which is so I wrote a kind of proposal, and I think Alex, you said you responded to. I have not seen it yet. Uh, in terms of how we can approach to adopting new CID and specifically I don't think we can we can just dump the existing CID and say like don't use it anymore we need some sort of migration pass there too because it's not just us our users and that kind of leads to the other items that I ended edit there which kind of can we adopt the process in terms of making breaking changes that has a migration pass built into them because it's really hard to tell people like to keep breaking things and not giving the room for the users to do like to plan for those changes. Because right now it's the choice is either you update to the new version or you stay behind because there's no, no middle ground. I feel like having some deprecation time frame would allow for them to plan uh, and maybe accumulate a bunch of things that they need to do at some point. Um, I mean, I'm happy I to write a plan how we can approach it and. I think you're right. I think that's a good thing to aim for. But I mean, the case of last week was that the the release went out with the wrong version number, right? Yeah, sure. Things should not just break. And there's no release plan that will cater for that. Sure. I, I'm, I'm not saying it's going to save there. But like, I think we will, as we will be migrating to new CIDs, we'll have to think, how do we deprecate old one? With a new multi-formats proposal, there's the same thing like doing some renaming. Even if we just bump the version, I don't think that's enough. I think we need a transition phase where we can guide how to do the transition and allow some name. Like specifically, I proposed in that issue, but you can have old names and new names at the same time. And old names can say, hey, we're deprecated. So they show up in editors, they dump warnings, they tell what to rename to and tell you when it will going to affect and be removed. That way teams can plan their changes without having to stay on the older version. And sometimes they can't even stay on the older version because some other dependency requires new version. So you kind of end up in this thing. Uh, yeah, I mean like IPFS will require the new version. So if that sounds good, I can write a, I don't know, document like a markdown and maybe we can stick it into somewhere and Whenever we are doing breaking change, we can point in the PR, like, can you follow this guide or something along those lines? So we have the contributing guidelines and maybe it should go in there. Cool. Like, How about I write it and submit it for the review and you can all provide a feedback. If that sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Thank you. So note, like some of those deprecation paths are going to need to be different depending on the scale of the breaking change. Like we may do, you know, longer period of time for deprecation support. Um, but like a lot of that, depending on the feature set that's needed to change, should 
we should clarify what the path, the update path is and the deprecation um, items in whatever issue that is. So for example, if we're transitioning to multi-format and this is gonna be a huge breaking change to the code API, then clarifying what that timeline and path looks like for support in this specific issue and then making sure we're doing appropriate blog and uh, forum announcements that that's, that's coming and people need, you have three months or six months or whatever time frame to, to update. Cool, sounds good. A path forward. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's everything. Um, thanks for coming, everyone. Please do fill in your weekly updates. Oh, wait, Andrew, there's, go. Yes, there is one more update. It's more of a, an internal concern than an external one, but it's sort of exciting news, at least for me. Uh, the uh, migrations have been completely refactored, and I'm finishing up the last PRs that uh, consolidate all the code between the IPFS update, uh, uh, IP, go IPFS, the uh, automatic updater inside of that, and what was uh, FS repo migration. So it knows how to see exactly which individual migration binaries to download, it knows how to download from our distribution site, and knows how to apply them and revert them. And so all that gets consolidated into a nice little library, and we don't have the massive and ever-growing uh, update binary anymore. Um, so just uh, getting those, those last all the, the testing in for that library and um, Otherwise, it's mostly done. So I think we're going to have some a lot easier time with his migrations. And the only thing that's left to do is some uh, website work to make sure the uh, distribution site has a few more directories in it, which shouldn't be a too much of a, of a problem. So I just wanted to. Yeah, you. no, this is this is really nice, especially. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to guess the the size of the latest FS repo migrations binary, um, <laughs> feel free to to post in the chat. We'll see who gets closest. You will underestimate probably. Um. <laughs> it, it got to the point where, yeah, this cannot go any further. <laughs> this must be fixed. So it is, it is uh, it's there. So we'll, we'll have that in. It would, theoretically, we could have it for this release, but I don't think that's realistic given the, that we're already in RC2, so. Keep going, Eric. <laughs> 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 that is sick oh my god yes um uh, 200 megabytes has been guessed maybe 400 for the people who don't have the uh the text dean says about 350 that's big that's big that's almost as big as node forge yeah i think i'll publish system requirements just to upgrade Easy. It's better just to one they just upload their <laughs> their repo first, <laughs> and then we'll upgrade it for them. Have um, you considered storing it in the cloud instead? I've heard this there's this thing called Filecoin. Maybe you could uh, save some hard drive space by using that. <laughs> yeah, it's going to require this Filecoin storage if we didn't fix this. Anyway, it's it ends here. So cool. That's great. Uh, yes, so thank you all for coming, everyone. This has been the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync uh, for Monday, the 14th of December, 2020. Be safe. Happy holidays. Uh, see you in the future on the internet. Bye.